This is section 5.1, Introduction to Decimals. Just like with fractional notation, decimal notation is used to denote a part of a whole. Numbers written in decimal notation are called decimal numbers or just simply decimals. The decimal 16.734 has three parts. The 16 is the whole number part, then we have the decimal point here in the middle, and the 743 is the decimal part. Now the positions of the different numbers in a decimal have different names. So we have different place values just like we did for whole numbers. If we look at the numbers to the right of the decimal point, those have some different names. So starting at the first place to the right of the decimal point, we have the tenths place, then the hundreds place, the thousandths place, the ten thousandths place, and the hundred thousandths place. And they would keep going on like that as we went to the right. For an example, let's find the place value for each digit of the number 16.734. So if we look at this number, we already know the place values for the 1 and the 6 in this number. This is in the tens place. The 6 would be in the ones place. Now when we go to the right of the decimal point, the first place to the right is the tenths place. The next place where the 3 is would be the hundreds place. And the 4 would be in the, the thousands place. Now if we want to write or read a decimal in words, there's a special way that we do this. We're going to go through three steps for doing this and do an example as we go along. Our example is to write the decimal 143.056 in words. Our first step is to take the whole number part and write that in words. So if we look at just the part of this that's to the left of the decimal point, we have this part, so this would be 143. Now where the decimal point is, we write AND. Now we look at the part to the right of the decimal point, and we say it or write it as though it were a whole number, and then we follow it by the place value of the last digit. So the place value of the 6 would be the thousandth place. For this part, then, we would have 56, and then we follow that with our place value name, 56 thousandths. So to read or write this whole decimal out in words, we'd have 143 and 56 thousandths. Now to write decimals in standard form, we can take a decimal that's written in words and reverse the procedure we just did. For example, if we have the decimal 106 and 500 and we want to write that in standard form, our whole number part is the 106, so we would just write the 106 down here. The AND stands for our decimal point, and then after that we have 500. Now that means that the 5 has to be in the hundreds place. So we put the zero in front of it as a placeholder. And we have a hint about that here. Another example is if we had 354 thousandths, since the last digit of that has to be in the thousandths place, that's the four, then we'd have to put our 54 so that it ended in the thousandths place. And that means we'd have to put a zero in front of the five as a placeholder. Now, once you get the hang of writing and reading decimals, then you can write a decimal as a fraction just by using the fractions associated with the words you use when you read it. So here's an example. If we're going to write this number as a fraction, first let's think about how we would read it or write it in words. Well, since we have 0 to the left of the decimal point, then we don't have to read anything for our whole number part. All we have to do is look at the decimal part of this, and we have 7, and that's in the tenths place. So this would just be 7 tenths. Now to write that as a fraction, we're going to make it 7 
over the value that we came up with for its place value. So to write 7 tenths as a fraction, we would write it as 7 tenths. And as a hint, notice that the number of decimal places in a decimal number is the same as the number of zeros in the denominator of the fraction. We can use this to write decimals as fractions. So a couple of examples. In this one, if we have 0 0.37, since this is two decimal places, then for our fractional part, for the denominator of our fraction, we have a one with two zeros following it. And this is the same, remember, as 37 hundredths. So we have 37 over 100. For this one over here, we have three decimal places here. That means we have three zeros in the denominator of our fraction. That makes it 29 thousandths. Let's do some examples. We'll write some different decimals as fractions. So let's start out with, and I'm not going to read this as in words first. I'm just going to read it as 0 0.35. If we're going to write this as a fraction, the first step is to write in words. And again, since there's only a zero to the left of the decimal point, we don't have to worry about the whole number part. Now we can think about this one two different ways. First of all, we can write it out in words and use that to write it as a fraction. If we were going to write this out in words, it would be 35 hundredths. And that, again, is because our 5 is in the hundredths place. So that would give us the fraction that looks like this. Or we could think about how many decimal places there are past the decimal point. Since there are two, that also tells us that we would have two zeros in our denominator. So that would give us 100 in the denominator. Now we also need to write these fractions in simplest form. Notice that 35 and 100 both have factors of 5. If we write 35 in its factored form, it's 5 times 7. 100 would be 5 times 20. So that means we can cancel out a 5. In our simplest form, we would have 7 twentieths. Let's do another one. For this one, let's just use the fact of how many places there are past the decimal point. So we have three places to the right of the decimal. That means that there are three zeros in the denominator after the one. So that gives us that gives us the 94. That gives us the 94 that was on the top and on the bottom we have one and three zeros. That gives us 94 thousandths. Now we want to reduce that to its simplest form. 94 we know is divisible by 2. If we divide 94 by 2, that would give us 2 times 47. If we divide 1,000 by 2, that would give us 2 times 500. So we can cancel out those 2's. And with what we have left, 47 is prime. So that gives us our fraction in simplest form, 47 five hundredths. Now we can also compare decimals. One way to compare them is to compare their graphs on a number line. Remember that when we're looking at a number line, the number on the left is smaller and the number on the right is larger. For example, if we wanted to compare 3 tenths and 7 tenths, we could look at their graphs. Here we have the distance from 0 to 1 split up into 10 equal parts. If we count over 3, we get 3 tenths. If we count over 7, we get 7 tenths. That means that the, th the 3 tenths is on the left and the 7 tenths is on the right, which means that the 3 tenths is less than the 7 tenths. Or we could write it this way, 7 tenths is greater than 3 tenths. Now it's a little bit hard to always graph two values to tell which is greater or smaller. So we have a couple of other ways to do this. The first way is if we're comparing two positive decimal values. 
what we would want to start out by doing is comparing digits in the same place values from left to right. If the numbers in the, the corresponding place values are equal, we keep going to the right until we get to a place where they're not equal. Once we get there, then the number with the larger digit in that place is the larger decimal. Let's look at an example of this. If we have these two decimal values, we can compare the threes. They're the same. The values in the ones place are both fives. The values in the tenths place are both sixes. Now finally we get to the place where numbers in the same place values are not equal. We have a three here and we have a five here. So now we're just going to look at which of those two is the larger value. And since three is less than five, that means that our number on the left is going to be less than the number on the right. Now we're going to do the same thing only with negative decimals. This works exactly the same way only when you get to the point where you have two digits that are, e that are not equal, then the number with the smaller digit gives you the larger decimal value. Let's look, look at another example, only in this case both values are negative. So again, the tens place we have equal digits, the ones place we have equal digits, the tens place we have equal digits. When we get down to the hundreds place, we have a three and a five, so they're not equal. But this time, the three, since it is a smaller of the two digits, that gives us the larger decimal. So since three is less than five, that means that the number on the left in this case is larger than the number on the right. And now one thing that we can do if we need some help in comparing decimals, we can always write zeros after the last digit to the right of the decimal point. It doesn't change the value of the number at all. For example, 8.5 is the same as 8.50, that's the same as 8.500, and so on. We can also write a whole number in decimal form just by putting a decimal point to the right of the ones digit. We can add as many zeros to the right of the decimal point as we want to and still have the same value. Let's compare some decimals. Let's start out with this pair of decimals. Well again, we're going to start with the very last most digit, which in both cases is zero. So then we go to the right. Now we have different digits. We have a two and a five. Since these are both positive values, then the larger value gives us the larger decimal. That means that the number on the right here, the five tenths, is larger than the two tenths. Now since we have the two tenths written on the left side, we're going to point our inequality symbol that way, and that means that two tenths is less than five tenths. So again, we're going to start with our leftmost digit, but notice already that on the left we have a positive value, and on the right we have a negative value. Now that automatically means, if we were thinking about these two being on a number line, that this one would be to the left of zero on a number line. This one would be to the right of zero. That means that our 14 hundredths is to the right of our negative 14,000 hundred thousandths, which automatically makes it greater. If we start comparing digits here, we have zeros in the ones place. In the tenths place, we have sixes. In the hundreds place, we have fours. Now, in the thousands place, we get to where our digits are not the same. And again, these are both positive values, so we're looking for the digits that's the digit that's greater to give us the greater decimal value. Since one is greater than zero, that means that this number is our greater number. So we're going to make our inequality pointing to the number on the left because that's the smaller of the two. And finally, let's do one where we have two negative values. Now we're comparing digits if we keep comparing, we have zeros. Finally, we get to the point where our digits are different, and that would be in our thousands place. We have a three here, and we have a zero here. Now, remember, if we had two negative values, the one with the smaller digit actually gives us the greater number. 
So this one is the smaller value. That means that this number on the right is the greater of the two. So we want our inequality to point the other direction. That means that the number on the left is less than the number on the right. Now when we're rounding decimals, now when we're rounding decimals, we do this in almost the same way as we round whole numbers. The only difference is that we drop digits to the right of the rounding place instead of replacing them with zeros. Let's look at an example. If we're rounding 63 and 782 thousandths to the nearest hundredth place, then we're going to look at the place that we're rounding at, which is the hundredth place. We look at what's to the right of that. It's a 2. Since that's less than 5, we're just going to drop that. And we're going to leave the digit in the hundredths place, the 8, the same. So here's some steps to go through to round decimals to a specific place value. So first of all, we're going to locate the digit to the right of the given place value. For example, if we're rounding 2 and 5, 457 thousandths to the nearest hundredth place. Remember how we drew the line in between the place we're rounding to and the next place. So now we're going to look at this 7. If this digit is 5 or greater, then we're going to add 1 to the digit to the left of that, and we drop everything from our line onto the right. So that means we're going to add 1 to this, which makes that a 6, and then we drop everything that's to the right of that. Here's our value rounded to the nearest hundredth. That would be 2 and 46 hundredths. Let's do some more examples of rounding. If we want to round 39 hundredths to the nearest tenth, now remember our line goes just to the right of the place we're rounding to. Here's the tenth place. So we're putting our line just to the right of that. So we're looking at the nine, since this is greater than five. That means we're going to round up. That means we're going to add one to our three. That gives us 0 0.4 and we drop all the digits to the right of that. So this ends up getting rounded to 4 tenths. Let's look at another example. If we want to round 174 thousandths to the nearest hundredth place, we're going to draw our line here between the hundredths place and the next place to the right. And then we're looking at this value and whether it's less than 5 or whether it's 5 or greater. This one is less than 5. That means that we're not going to change our digit here. We're just going to drop the 4. So our rounded value would be 17 hundredths. For this one, we have 22 and 99 thousandths. We want to round it to the nearest hundredth. So here's our hundredth place. There's where our line goes. Now we're looking at this value. This is 5 or greater. Which means we're adding 1 to our digit on the left. So we're going to take that number and we're going to add 1. Well, if we add 1 to 9, that gives us 10. So that means we're actually going to have to carry over here. So we're taking this and adding 1. That gives us 10, so we write down the 0, we carry the 1 over here, and that gives us 22 and 10 hundredths. Or we could actually write this as 22 and 1 tenth. But if we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, that probably means that we want to go ahead and write the 0 in the hundredth place.